Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, MNLG. And for today's vlog, we will discuss you now the content of your module. So, nakita natin na the first topic there is the law of inertia. And I know that you have read watch many videos about the law of inertia. But in our content, I'll be discussing the concept based on what is being stated in your module. So, usapang module po tayo ngayon. Alright. So, as we can see, if you're going to browse your module. So, the learning competency, okay, nakita natin, um, that it it is being stated that the learners should be able to investigate the relationship between the amount of force applied in the mass of the object to the amount of change in the in the object's motion that's the learning competency and take note that is part of of our milk so yeah so alam naman natin na sa dalam dami ng competency so yan po ay napili okay it's nasabi lang essential so most essential learning competencies and apart from that, so mayroon din tayong objectives. So ang ating mga objectives in our day one, we have four objectives. Namely, um, the first objective is defined inertia unrelated to mass. The second objective is explain the law of inertia. The third objective, relate inertia to stopping force. And last but not the least, cite situations where the law of inertia applies. So why I am telling this to all of you because I believe that the learners should focus or the teachers should focus on the objectives because this is the most important thing that we could transfer to our learners. My part as a teacher is in the new normal so it is my way of helping you, my grade 8 students, para mas maintindihan lalo, para mag-guide kayo at Masabi ko na na, ah, I'm done. I'm done with that part because my learners have really learned and can, um, for me kasi, um, the, the best learning that I could consider is that when the students could actually apply this to the real life situation, if there is an application, from theory to application. So I'm just going to focus my discussion on the four objectives and then, um, after this, siguro naman, maintindihan natin, late, at the latter part, I'll be giving some examples. Alright? So, are you ready now? Okay, let's proceed. Now, in your module class, mayroon tayong mga bagay doon na mga terms to consider. Ayan, mayroon tayong nasabi dito na, um, una-una na sa Isaac Newton. So, ayan, Isaac Newton, alam naman natin because you have watched that first vlog about the life of Isaac Newton although ano lang yun parang portion lang sa buhay na Isaac but nakakatulong na rin yun I guess and secondly uh, meron tayong tinawag dito na, okay uh, we know that Isaac Newton formulated the three laws of motion so alam natin yan and in our topic here meron da dalawang bagay tayong dapat tandaan na terminology first bodies at rest the word is at rest and bodies in motion. So, dalawang, bagay, mag, dalawang term magkaiba yun. So, in science, or specifically in this topic, we use the word at rest. Ano ba yung at rest? Pag sabing at rest, o oh, ibig sabihin yan, the, the, the object is not moving, or naka-station lang siya, kaya at rest. Kaya baka ma-confuse ma, ma kayo, bakit sir at rest ang tawag? And of course, the opposite is the bodies in motion. So, motion means moving. So, gumagalaw na. So, yun ang focus natin sa inertia. Alright, another term that we need to consider is the balance and then balance force. Okay, can you see the picture of shown? Alright, the first picture shows the balance force means that equal forces in opposite direction produces no motion. So, in that picture, the truck, okay, shows a balance force wherein both sides is equal to 100 Newton. So, yeah. Obviously, balance and force because if you can see both sides, lahat 100 Newton. So, just like playing a tug of war, if you, if you happen to experience, the moment that the, the motion stop both sides, it means that zero na yun ang kanyang net force, balance na ang force both sides. Kaya stop na ang movement, right? Just like in the picture, the truck, okay, 100 newton sa kabila, and the other one is 100 newton. So, it, or it shows a balance force. The next term is the unbalanced force. Alright, what does it mean by unbalanced forces? From the word itself, unbalanced forces, meaning to say, unequal, unequal forces, or unequal opposing forces produce an unbalanced 
force causing motion. So by looking at the picture or in the picture itself, it shows there that the truck moves in this direction. So the other side is 100 newton and the other side is um, 60 newton. So we have bigger force and smaller force. So that is unbalanced forces. Okay, that's it. So to unlock the first objective, sagutan natin ang objective number one. Okay, ready na ba kayo? Okay, so now. So our first objective, ang sabi dito ay, okay, klaro naman na define inertia and related to mass. So since we're talking about the Newton's first law of motion, so, so we must first define uh, what is what inertia means. So inertia is the tendency, okay, the tendency of object to keep doing what they are doing. If an object is resting, or resting means stop, it will tend to keep resting. If an object is moving, it will tend to keep moving. This property now is called the law of, uh, this property is called inertia. So accordingly, um, lagi ko to nababanggit in my um, previous mga classes even before, iba iba na tanahawakan ko from, from kinder, I, I, I used to be a teacher uh, in kindergarten, elementary, and then um, senior high school, junior high school, senior high school and college. And so, lahat niya ta ng areas, except lang siguro sa graduate school. So, I hope na, yun, uh, in, the, in the next days to come, no, makapagturo tayo sa graduate school. So, laging binabanggit dito na about kay Newton, according to Isaac Newton, in his, in his theory, or in his first law of motion, states that bodies at rest will remains at rest. Bodies in motion will remains in motion unless it is acted by an external force. So meaning to say, for example, pag isang bagay na kay station ng dyan, pag walang mga in disturbance of force or external force na i-apply, ay talagang mag lang yan at rest. Pag walang mga influences. For example, sa ating bahay, mga gamit natin. So pag yan ay iwan na natin dyan at wala namang gumagalaw, so it will stays at rest. So, yun ang, yung, yun ang thinking ng law of inertia. And then, ang bagay din, mag-move din yan, unless, mag-stop lang yan pag may mga external force na ma-apply. So, that's, that's the simple logic about the law of inertia. But talking about the mass, yun, ano, naman ang, ano naman ang relationship ng mass at sa, sa inertia? So, accordingly, so mayroong tayong sabi dito na um, relating to... Um, mass and inertia so pinatunayan niya na kasi sa term pa lang or sa definition pa lang na mass the mass is the amount of matter in an object so uh, we expect that every object may it be small may it be big or something like mayroon siyang corresponding mass but how are we going to relate this to inertia it um, it was being mentioned or stated that the more mass of an object the more inertia the object has. So, pag uh, kabalik tara, in opposite naman, lesser mass, lesser inertia. So, think of an object that you can um, find at home. Nakita sa bahay, for example, um, example, refrigerator and the rice cooker. Which do you think uh, from this object has greater mass and has greater inertia? So, alam na natin ang sagot, right? So, from the concept itself, more mass, more inertia. Less mass, less inertia. Kaya, that's the relationship between mass and inertia. So, am I clear? Alright, okay na po ba? Okay, so, I hope that those concepts na clear na natin, so, na we answered already, defined inertia and related to mass. Okay. So, moving on to the next Explain the law of inertia. So actually, nasabi ko na kanina. Nasabi, sorry na. Nasabi ko na kanina. Okay. <laughs> naging, ano si sir, naging excited. Okay. So, ayan na nga, ang law of inertia, yan isa sa law na na-formulate ni Isaac Newton. So, ulitin ko na lang. According to Isaac Newton, bodies at rest will remains at rest. Bodies in motion will remains in motion unless it is acted by an external force. 
or imagine you have a toy car with you sa bahay, okay, um, when your younger brother plays uh, with a toy car, so pag once apply ng force, tatakbo yan, at pag mag-stop lang yan, pag may external force, yan. So, marami mga factors yan, bakit siya nag nagaran, may mga friction na tawag, uh, but hindi ko yan discuss ito, kaya baka malito na kayo about the static friction, the rolling friction, the sliding friction, and everything, so, focus lang tayo sa the law of inertia. So, I hope that we answered already the objective number two. Alright, so let's answer the third um, question. Relate inertia to stopping forces. My question is, are you familiar with seat belts? Well, if you do, then this would answer our question. Alright, so now I'm going to show some of the, uh, I'm going to present a concept and I hope that you will really pay attention to understand the third objective, relate inertia to stopping forces. Alright. Inertia is the reason that people in cars need to wear seat belts. A moving car has inertia and so the riders inside it. When a driver applies the brakes, an unbalanced force is applied to the car. Normally, the bottom of the seat applies an unbalanced force, friction, which slows the riders down as the car slows. If the driver stops the car suddenly, however, this force is not exerted over enough time to stop the motion of the riders. Instead, the riders continue moving forward with most of their original speed because of their inertia. And that's it. Well, to understand better the concept, here are the pictures that would help us out understand the physics of seatbelt. First, as a car moves forward, the driver Okay, the driver shown here is a crash test, moves forward with the same velocity as the car. The second picture shows that when the driver hits the brakes, the car stops. If the stop is sudden and the driver is not wearing a seatbelt, the driver keeps moving forward. And for the third picture, finally, the windshield applies an unbalanced force that stops the driver's forward motion. So these uh, things explains the physics of seat belts in relation to the law of inertia. Alright, to continue, uh, if the driver is wearing a seat belt, the seat belt rather than the windshield applies in balance force that stops the driver's forward motion. The force from the seat belt is applied over longer time, so the force causes less damage. In a collision, seat belts alone are sometimes not enough to stop the motion of drivers or passengers airbags further in people from the effects of inertia in an accident. Alright, so before I end this vlog, I wanted to answer this question. If a car makes a sudden stop, what happens to a passenger riding in the back seat who is not wearing a seat belt? Again, if a car makes a sudden stop, what happens to a passenger riding in the back seat who is not wearing a seat belt? Alright, so grade 8 students, kindly place your answers in the comment box and I'll be reading that answer, okay? Alright, that ends my um, discussion about law of inertia. Uh, keep watching guys because our next vlog will be um, talking on the law of acceleration. So again, bye everyone. Thank you for watching.